you know, our Father in heaven. Um, why do we say our Father? Why do we say our? Because God wants, you know, the Lord wants us to know that as a child of God, we are one body in Christ now, and that we no longer think just for ourselves, but we think for our brothers and sisters as well. So when we pray, we pray for everyone. That's why we say our Father. And why do we want to say Father in heaven instead of, you know, our Lord or our God? Because the first cause of our creation, right, the Almighty God in heaven, he desires us to know him as a father. He wants us to have that in intimacy with us because he sees us as, our, as his children and he loves us as a father does. So he wants us to have that intimate. So when we say father, we really want, you know, Actually, you know, like in, 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 in Hebrew, they say Abba, which is actually more like daddy when you say it. That's what it means. So when you say Abba, Father, you're saying like Papa or Daddy. That's kind of the relationship that he wants us to have with him. And so we say our Father in heaven because he belongs in heaven. Um, hallowed be thy name. What does hallowed mean? It means to be consecrated, to have a – it means – for a sacred purpose, right? Something that is, should be revered. And so we should also, not only we, we're, we're saying that we revere his name, you know, that is the name above all names, but we also remind ourselves that, you know, so that when we use his name, it is not in vain, but it is for a purpose, that when we say his name, it's, it's truly for something that we were really calling on him. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right. What is his kingdom in heaven? And where is it where is it going? Well first, you know, what is the the Father's will for us on earth? Is is to have the kingdom of God in us, in our hearts. And what is it like in heaven? You know? It's peace, it's love, it's um service and mercy. So just as it is in heaven, he, we are asking God for that will for us in our lives. That will be done on earth that is in heaven. So we, we are asking for peace and love and to serve one another. Give us this day our daily bread is saying to God to give all of us the things that we need to, to live for the day. You know, provisions and food and clothing and the shelter. And that's what we're asking, not just for ourselves, but for all of us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So first we asking for forgiveness. Um, and also, so we, you should think about that too, like when you say it. And not just brush over it, because, you know, it's good to, to really think about the sins that you have committed, you know. And also think about the things that other people have done to you, those people who who uh, who have hurt you or, or trespassed against you, who even offended you or who even offended you even though they didn't do anything wrong. They just still offended you, those kind of, you know. And you forgive them. You let it go. You ask the Lord to let it go. So in your heart when you say that, let those things go because you cannot be forgiven unless you first forgive. Lead us not into temptation. So when you think about that, you think about your weakness, that you are weak, and that you need the Lord to help you with all the temptations and the desires of this world, that he leads you away from them. And that you also need his help against the evil, the, the plans of the enemy against you, that he may deliver you from all evil, especially the evil one. And lastly, we would give him all the glory, you know, for the kingdom, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. So that's what I thought about today. Amen. So it's not only a good thing to think deeply as you pray that prayer, but also, you know, for people like who, who don't know how to pray a lot. Right. Like, you know, Lynn says you know, she sometimes has trouble praying. This is a good 
uh, structure to actually learn how to pray, right? First, you give a couple of minutes to the Lord to worship and praise Him in the beginning, and then you, you know, you you pray that the Lord's will be done, and also you pray a little bit, give a little bit of time to pray for your needs and the needs of others, right? And then give a, like you know a couple of minutes to pray uh, forgiveness and ask to help you forgive other people, right? And then you, you, you know, the, the things that are going on in your life, temptations and sin and things like that that are tough to get over, you ask for the Lord's help and give a couple of minutes for that. And last, you, you worship and praise him again. And so this is like the, a good structure if you guys don't really know how to pray a lot. You know, if you do like five minutes each, that's already like, how, how many is that? At least over 30, 40 minutes, right? Right, right. So that's a good that's a good practice to do. Mm-hmm. And then once you get into that you can start, you know, doing it your own way, but it'll kinda of jump start your your mind like if you don't know how to do it, you know, it's easy to do it in that structure. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Okay, don't stop if you got more to say. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanna make sure I don't cut you off. Excellent. Thank you. Hmm? No, go on. No, so that was great, Peter. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll help people pray when they don't know what to say and they go by that pattern. It will really help a lot. We went through that lesson in Pasadena Church of God, and it really did help to start out with praise and 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 the intimacy, the relationship, and everything that Peter said, I'm not going to re-preach it. He did a good job. So thank you very much, because you'd be surprised how many people struggle over, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. I don't know, you know. They, and that, that really helps a lot. It really does. It's like a little map to get them from point A to point Z. Excellent. All right, you guys. Now we're also going to have the Word of God with... Um, oh, do you want me to do the other thing too? Yes, I do. Thank you. I was hoping you would do that. Yes. Okay, so Pat wanted me to help uh, everyone to learn how to memorize Scripture. Mm-hmm. All right? And I don't know if you guys want to like all participate with me in doing one right now so we could all kind of do it together. What you need, you're gonna need is your um, your Bible mm-hmm. and, and something to write with and something to write to write down. Romans eight twenty eight. And the reason why I guess Pat wanted me to do this is because you know a lot of people don't know how to learn to memorize. It's very hard for people to. Uh, they don't have that kind of method to do it. Reading it sometimes and reading it over sometimes is, is not that helpful unless you read it like a hundred times the same thing. But it's it's kind of hard to do that sometimes. What I've recently started doing is um, the first letter of every word, that's the method I use, and it, and it has helped me. Uh, and I only do one every week. And actually, doing this method, I only have to do it for the very first couple minutes. And after I've done that, um, I, I, started memorize, I started memorizing in my head already. So, okay, so first we're gonna read the word. Romans 8.28. Okay. I'm using the NKJV, but um, it's almost the same. It's only like one one word different from the KJV. And so it says those. It says, it says, it says them. It says those. So, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so first I would think about and I would, as I write it down, I would actually try to memorize it as I write it down. So, and we know that all things work together. He's teaching us a method of memorizing scripture in case there comes a time when Bibles or the word becomes illegal. Anyway, go on. Work together for two. So it says it twice. So I, I will remember that. It says it twice. To those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Right. 
There you go. To those who are called. I hope you guys are writing this down. I hope you're participating in this. As I say it, I will write on the first letter of each one, of each word. There you go. And I, try, I will try to do it without actually looking at the thing. But when I get stuck, I'll look down and, and use that. Right. So, and we... So, okay, and we know. Anyway, A and then W, K, uh, uh, and T, we A, know. T. So he's initializing every word. Yeah, and we know that all things... Okay, show everybody what you did on the paper. So I would... Right there, all that right there. It's the Don't first letter. The, initial, the first letters of every word. And it, it kind of gets you to to think about it too, because see how I messed up right there. That uh-huh. means that like, that means that my memory of that was wrong. So then now I kind of remember that. Right. Okay, that was T instead of instead of four is to those who love God. Right. So I did, and then as I do this now now I'm now I'm only gonna look at this after I read it, after I read it, and thought about it. I would write it down. And after I write it down, I would write this as I read it again. And now I'm only going to be looking at this when I when I try to memorize the whole thing. Right. So, so it will go, let's see. And we know, kind of, it looks like backwards to me. I reason. know. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Right. And because I've done all that, I sort of already remember it. So now I'm, for the whole week, I'm just going to be thinking about this thing over and over again. And when I get stuck, I'm going to only go to this right here Excellent. and try this again. And then if I can't, you know, whenever I get stuck, you know, I would think, try, try to memorize it. If yeah. I get stuck, I would look down here and try to figure out that word. There you go. And actually this, it seems like a lot of work, but actually right here, you know, like, I'm a little nervous, so I can't really remember memorize it that as good as I do on my own. But um, this right here, just the moments that I did this, I already memorized it. Right. And for the whole week, I don't have to do anything about it again. Right. You no. Know? Right. And the ones that I have, the ones that actually, the first one that I did, this is actually like that long. Wow! Right? Is, Look at that. This is Psalms 103, 1 through 4. You know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that, and all that is within, within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His uh, benefits. You know, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who uh, redeems your life from destruction? Who, get, who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies? Yes. So that's that's what I did, and then the, the next one was actually pretty long too. That's what, the second one I did. Excellent. But then because I, because I did it this way, even though when I looked at it, I was very intimidated by it. I did it just the same way as I did this one, and I memorized it. So right, right. And it sticks Excellent. to me. And so I, and it takes like a whole week to get it really into your mind and into your mm-hmm. and do it slow. You know, like uh, what I learned, what I heard about um, when reading the Word of God and all this stuff. Like, you know, you, you keep. You have all these building materials that you you have, but you haven't built the house yet. You know the foundation, right? So why don't you just use the the building materials that you already have and start building it instead of actually collecting a lot of building material and not building anything. So this is one way of actually just using what you already have, right? And slowly build up that that foundation. And actually, I think this blesses the Lord. I think like doing this not only sees that you are really wanting to get into the word, but I think the more you do this, the more the Lord sees your, your intent, yes. you know? Yes. Yes. In your heart into it. And it blesses yes. it glorifies him. It does. Right. It does. And, uh, I think that you know Yeah. So that's it. Now you know you guys, I really appreciate you, Peter, doing this. There are different ways that you can memorize. Some people m- memorize by initials. Some people memorize by keywords. For example, and we know that all things work together. Bam, that's a keyword. Love God, that's another keyword. Call, that's another word. And the last word, purpose. So you can pick out words 
that help you memorize what the whole sentence said. You know that all things work together. So the, the work together is a key. Love God is a key. Calls and then purpose. And then your mind can put the pieces together like a puzzle. You can fill in the blanks. We know that all things work together for good to those that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. Even if you get a word or two wrong, you're getting it. You, you got the essence of what it means and what it says. And after a while of, of loosely paraphrasing, you'll have it memorized and you'll be able to say it exactly the way mm -hmm. it's written. And, and so keep doing it. And another trick to that, and it is a trick, read your scripture out loud, record your mm -hmm. voice, not someone else's voice, record your voice and play that a number of times, and especially three times in a row each time you do it. That's another way of embedding it into your mind, verbatim. All right. Thank you so much, Peter.